There's been a few recent theories to release, namely the game theory, dual process theory, and hyperdroid videos that have attempted to finally solve the bite victim's name. While hyperdroids is the most recent one, the other two tackled the idea that the bite victim is actually Cassidy, the fifth missing child and the spirit inhabiting Golden Freddy. However, they were not the first people to think of this idea. Doing YouTube, I've made a lot of online friends, and some of the best ones I've made once believed this theory, known as BV5, or Bite Victim 5th, which is of course the theory that the Bite Victim is the fifth missing child. And while not always, the theory often has Cassidy be the Bite Victim as well. I've never believed this theory though, and I have always understood why the theory existed, but my main issue with it is just that, well, there's many issues with it, including the way that it is solved in the first place. The idea of the bite victim's name being Dave is popular right now, but this video isn't about that. In this video, I'll be explaining all the reasons that I personally don't believe the theory, but I should emphasize that this isn't a hate video towards the theory or the theorist suggesting it. It is simply me giving my two cents on the idea and you guys can feel free to give your two cents in the comments down below. So, without further ado, let's get started. The Survival Logbook is probably the biggest lore book in the entire series, giving us information like Mike Schmidt and Michael Afton being the same person, Michael Afton being the player of FNAF 4, and most importantly, the name Cassidy. Throughout the book, there is faded text, and on some of the pages with faded text, there is a number somewhere that is out of place. Plugging all these numbers into the word search as coordinates gives you the name Cassidy, a name which appeared in the fourth closet confirming it to be the correct solution. On certain pages of the book, you can rate your feelings about tonight's shift, but on two of these pages, there's words that are out of place. Altered text, that seems to be responding to the things that the faded text says. Faded says, does he still talk to you? And Altered says, I can hear sounds. Faded says, the party was for you. And Altered says, it was for me. Faded says, what do you see? And Altered says, I can't see. Altered also says the words, I'm scared, which is a bit harder to figure out, but many people, including Hyperdroid, have interpreted that as a response to the question, do you have dreams, referencing the FNAF 4 nightmares. While FNAF 4 is Michael's nightmare, the bite victim also seems to have experienced them, and all this tells us that in the logbook there are two different spirits talking to each other. One of them is the bite victim, and one of them is Cassidy. The question stems from whether or not Cassidy and the bite victim are separate entities here, or one and the same, with the puppet being the faded text. With the latter option, there's two ideas people cite here. The first is that the name Cassidy is in altered text, meaning the altered text is answering the question of what his name is, since that has been asked by the faded text throughout the book. The other option is that the faded text is trying to tell the altered text what his name is because he doesn't remember it, and so the faded text labeled the coordinates for the name Cassidy and put a mirror on the parallel page asking what the altered text can see so he can read his own name. However, neither of these options entirely make sense, and basically for the same reason. The faded text is on the pages that contain the number clues that lead to the name Cassidy in the first place, meaning the faded text is 100% the one writing the name. The name Cassidy in the word search is not altered text, it is simply contained in coordinates that lead to each letter of the name, and the faded text is who is setting these coordinates. The altered text isn't who says the name Cassidy, the faded text is. Now of course, this doesn't explain away the mirror idea, with the puppet trying to remind the bite victim of his name, however, while the name Cassidy isn't in altered text, there is altered text in the word search. Altered text asking the questions, who are you, and what is your name? While yes, the faded text does ask what the altered text's name is, the altered text also asks what the faded text's name is. It's a conversation, and the word search is the faded text answering the question. The faded text is Cassidy. Plus, there is also a grave in FNAF 6, the grave of the fifth missing child, that is blocked off, and in the logbook we can see another grave, drawn by Michael, that has the words, my name, on it, in faded text. 
It's the faded text whose name belongs on that grave, not the altar text. The altar text may or may not have answered the question in the book, possibly with the Dave connection if Hyperdroid is correct, but regardless, the logbook shows the faded text asks for the bite victim's name, then the bite victim asks what the faded text name is, and the faded text answers in the logbook with the name Cassidy. That mirror on the page next to the word search isn't related to the word search itself. If it's related to anything, it's related to the name Dave being backwards, or a reference to Happiest Day being the mirror reflection of Fredbear's from FNAF 4, or something else. Though neither of those are certain, and it might not even be anything specific, it might have just been for the faded text question of what do you see. So that's everything wrong with the solution, but there's also some stuff wrong with the theory itself. So let's talk about that now, starting with the biggest yet also most controversial reason, Cassidy is a girl. Now, Cassidy can very well be a male name. The name works for either gender. The issue is that throughout the series, Cassidy has been established to be a girl. The only time Cassidy wasn't a girl was in the FNAF movie, and it's debatable whether or not that kid was actually Cassidy. Obviously, he was Golden Freddy, but in the novel trilogy, Golden Freddy was Michael Brooks. Doesn't mean the movie character is Michael Brooks, but he could be, but in general, it doesn't have to be Cassidy at all. Everywhere else we've seen Cassidy, they've either been literally shown as, or heavily implied to be, female. Cassidy's first appearance was in The Fourth Closet, where she is a little girl with long black hair, though the graphic novel doesn't really get that right. It's already a big red flag that the first time Cassidy as a character was established outside of the code that wasn't confirmed until this book, shows Cassidy as a girl. That's very suspicious. We also know by now that Cassidy is the fifth missing child and is Golden Freddy, and while Cassidy wasn't the fifth missing kid in the fourth closet, she was one of the missing kids, so she's definitely the fifth and Golden Freddy in the game's timeline. Now, while Happiest Day is meant to be for the bite victim, he isn't necessarily the Golden Freddy spirit in it. He might be, but he doesn't have to be, as all the spirits are being set free in Happiest Day, and the pieces of Happiest Day are the bite victim's memories, something my next theory will talk about much more in detail. So it wouldn't be shocking to have him as part of Happiest Day, just as the one binding it together rather than the actual Golden Freddy spirit. However, if we say that he is that spirit, there's also the possibility that Cassidy was originally meant to be that spirit, but that she gave it up to let the bite victim take her place. One of the lines in the logbook is, The party was for you. If you think about it, this could be a rejection of the offer. Happiest Day Reversed is Fredbear's from FNAF 4, the bite victim's party where he died. We learn in the books that for a spirit to be set free, a bad memory of theirs, typically the memory of their death, has to be turned into a good memory. If Happiest Day is the bite victim's party, it makes sense that his happiest day was the party he died at transformed into a happy memory. Hence, Cassidy rejecting that offer makes sense. The party wasn't hers, it was the bite victim's. Now, it's more controversial, but if Cassidy is the princess in Princess Quest, either Happiest Day hasn't happened yet, or she wasn't freed in Happiest Day. Also, it's Princess Quest, which does imply Cassidy to be a girl. Basically, what I'm saying is that Cassidy was offered the place of Golden Freddy in Happiest Day, but rejected it, and let the bite victim be freed instead. She was originally that spirit, but gave it up. She was offered the cake, but she didn't take it. Now, that's why she's still around in Security Breach. So, it's suspicious that in the logbook, we see the puppet offer a little girl with black hair, similar to Cassidy in the books, a cake on a page talking about the happiest day of your life, when in the Happiest Day minigame in FNAF 3, the puppet gives cake to Golden Freddy, who is Cassidy in the games. Again, Cassidy might not be that spirit in Happiest Day, but at least she was originally going to be. So if this girl in the logbook is meant to be Cassidy, that makes her a girl. Some argue that this girl's hair is in pigtails, and Cassidy is said to have long hair, which is true, but at the same time, we don't see all of the girl's hair. Pigtails aren't as common with long hair, but by no means is it impossible, and the fact that everything else matches here makes me very skeptical about just throwing away this entire piece of evidence based on something that only might not match, but also still could. So sure, it's never been outright stated that Cassidy is a girl in the games, but they are in the books, they are in Princess Quest, and a girl matching the novel trilogy description of Cassidy is in the logbook, so I think she most likely is a girl. Something else that is very important here is that the bite victim can't be a missing child. Well, technically he can, but it can only work under a very convoluted storyline, and even then, it still doesn't really make sense. Sure, FNAF has never been simple, but I think this would be a little overly complex, even for FNAF. 
One idea suggests that the bite victim was killed in the bite of 83, and then Afton used Remnant to bring him back to life. In the fourth closet, Sister Location and Frailty, it is established that Remnant has the ability to both bring people back to life and prevent people from dying. So, the idea is that Afton brought his son back to life, then stuffed him into Fredbear, which led to the Springlocks killing him again and him possessing the animatronic. Then, when the missing children incident happened, Afton claimed his son was a part of it in order to divert the blame away from himself. However, this doesn't really make sense. In the FNAF 1 newspapers, it is stated that Afton was actually caught on camera luring the missing kids. It's never stated specifically that he was caught luring all of them, but the fact that he was caught luring two of them means that people already knew he was the killer. This is something that was established in the books and in FNAF VR. Everyone knows Afton is the killer, they just can't prove it in a court of law without the bodies. Not very realistic to my knowledge, but it's what the lore establishes. That means that he didn't need to deflect blame, because he was the one accused of the murders but he wasn't going to be convicted for it anyway. On top of that, the missing children incident happened in 1985. That's too much time between the bite victim dying and the missing kids dying, so it doesn't make sense that Afton's claims could get the bite victim roped in with the other four missing kids that he killed two years later. You could say that instead he simply revived his son, let him live, and then lured him along with the other missing kids two years later. However, if he cared about his son enough to literally bring him back to life, why would he just kill him again later? On the contrary, if he didn't care much and just wanted to experiment, again, why kill him again and not bring him back to life? Another idea is that the bite was actually after the missing children incident, in which case Afton wouldn't be killing him again. But why would he choose to kill his own son and revive him instead of killing literally anyone else? Another idea is that Afton isn't the one who revived the bite victim, and instead Charlotte was. This would explain the line in FNAF World where the yellow eyes say, something terrible happened, but I won't let the same happen to you. Essentially, he was part of the missing children incident, but she wasn't going to let him possess an animatronic like the other ones did, she was going to bring him back to life. However, if Charlotte could revive the bite victim, why couldn't she revive the other missing kids? One argument is that the missing kids' bodies were more mangled, but that argument doesn't make sense for a few reasons. First, the missing kids died in the animatronics, but their bodies weren't mangled, they were simply electrocuted to death. If the bite was before the missing children incident, then why couldn't she have revived him from the bite in that case? Because the bite victim is arguably more mangled than the missing kids as his head was literally crushed. Another idea could just be that he hadn't possessed an animatronic yet while the other missing kids had. However, if the bite victim was stuffed into Golden Freddy by Afton, which he undoubtedly would have been if he was part of the missing children incident, then he would have possessed it, and Charlotte wouldn't have been able to stop that. Unless she can literally force a spirit to stop possessing its host in order to revive them, and I doubt that, but if she could, then there's the same problem. Why could she not have revived the others? If we are to say that Afton actually didn't stuff the bite victim in Golden Freddy, that would indicate it was for the purpose of experimentation, in which case Charlotte wouldn't have been the one to revive him, Afton would, which comes with the problems we already discussed. In the case that the bite happened, Charlotte revived the bite victim, and then Afton killed him in the missing children incident, why in the hell would Afton, whose goal is immortality, decide to murder his son, who literally inexplicably came back to life, instead of experimenting on him. Now, maybe he did experiment on him, but in that case, why did he decide to kill him if he hadn't solved immortality yet? Literally the only hope of him achieving his goal, and he just throws him out like garbage. It does not make sense. No matter what way you look at it, the bite victim being a part of the missing children incident simply does not make sense. Really, I think the biggest problem with the theory is that it's overly convoluted. Either the bite victim dies, gets revived, and then gets killed by Afton, or he gets killed by Afton, gets revived, and then dies again. That's convoluted on its own. Throw in the problems with the theory, the problems with the logbook solution, and the issue of Cassidy's gender, and here we have a theory that to me just doesn't really make sense. I completely understand where the theory comes from, I just don't think it's very likely. But hey, maybe I missed something. Maybe there's a way to make all of this work that I didn't think of. So if you disagree, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Regardless, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to. And stay tuned for my next theory because it's kind of related, but also very separate. And I think that that one is probably a bit more interesting. So I hope you guys will stick around for that one whenever that eventually comes out. Probably next week if I'm able to get it done by then, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys!